If you're watching this video right now, it's very likely that you've been through some trauma in the past. Whether it be some kind of childhood PTSD that keeps on plaguing you day by day, or some kind of relationship issue, some recent breakup you went through, or just anything else that's clogging up your mind and stopping you from being able to think. And you sit here right now, and you think that this kind of monkish living, this kind of monk mode is going to help you. Let me tell you right now, if you go into this video with any sort of anger, anxiety, worry, doubt, lack of self-assurance, this type of living would not help you because you lack the open heart to accept what you really deserve, which at the end of the day is literally genuine happiness. You deserve this kind of happiness. You need to tell yourself right now, I don't deserve to feel anger. I don't deserve to be hurt. I deserve to be loved with all my heart. So before we start, I want you to take three deep breaths just with me right now so we can just calm yourself down and with every long exhale that we do i hope that you can breathe out any of the internal anger that's built up in your body and we can loosen your joints so you can genuinely understand how to find happiness within this video so with me inhale Exhale. Another inhale. Last one, inhale. Exhale. I want you to loosen up right now and think to yourself, this is not going to be like any monk mode video you have ever heard in your life. I want to see you by the end of this video, learn how to genuinely be happy, not just these kind of spikes of useless dopamine that other YouTubers give you. I see a lot of YouTubers posting stuff about like how you shouldn't drink alcohol, how you shouldn't do drugs, how you should do meditation, sports, all these things are correct but I just told you about these things in five seconds. I think it's the most useless thing for them to repeat over and over again, these kind of blatantly obvious things that we really don't need to repeat. Obviously, I might go into a little more detail about why you shouldn't do these things, but I think what I'm really trying to hammer down in this video is that they're not giving you the full picture. They're really not teaching you how you should live your life. They're just teaching you things that might, you know, compound to something bigger. But imagine having individual things just lying around in your life. They're not gonna help you at all. What I'm doing right here is that I want to line all these things together. I want to build a routine for you. I want to build this kind of um, layer of compounding events together that would make you feel this internal satisfaction. And the first misconception that I really want to tackle is that a lot of YouTubers think that monk mode means that you live in complete isolation, that you should just get rid of all distractions, just get rid of everything in your mind and like live this like really like uh, f full of self, like this life full of self-restraint. I've tried that. And I'm going to be very honest, that's not the way to find a true fulfilling life. You need people around you. We are social animals. And I'm gonna go through how socializing is one of the most important factors to living a genuine life. So that's why I'm giving you here right now the no bullshit guide to monk mode. The full guide that I think is correct. So I hope you can listen and we can go through this guy together. I hope that you can stare in my eyes. Stop using your phone, stop checking the comments, stop like liking any of the other videos, scrolling down suggested videos. Look in my eyes, 20 minutes. I'm gonna give you everything. 
So step one is gratitude. And you might look at me and laugh. You might say, why gratitude? I thought this is gonna be a monk mode video. Why are you not teaching me about meditation? Why not about sports? How I should exercise? Well, let me tell you right here. I've read this book, it's called The Monk's Guide to Happiness. I've mentioned this in my previous video as well about meditation. Um, and the most beautiful thing about this, this book is that it told us that every monk, like, you know, does gratitude. The most important thing in the world is to give back, is to express your love and compassion towards other people. So you might be thinking right now, oh, this guy's just gonna uh, tell me, um, I'm just gonna make a gratitude journal. Now I realize how hard that is. I'm gonna be honest, even though I try to keep a gratitude journal, it's one of the hardest things that you can probably discipline yourself to do. It's not like normal journaling, it's not like meditation. It's one of those things that you would have to go the extra step to do. So what I suggest right here is my sort, my own perception of gratitude. Because I mix gratitude and meditation together. And I think when you can get a two in one, it's one of the most productive and the most uh, beautiful things that you can ever experience. What I normally do is when I do my morning meditation, obviously you should be doing morning meditation as well, but um, all that said, you can find meditation guides on YouTube and I'm not gonna go through the specifics of meditation, but I just sit down in front of my window, yeah? The, the sunlight streaming in and I would do like 10 minutes of meditation. I would just complete, do breathing, do focusing, do mind work. Then I would close my eyes. Then I would just imagine this like, my inhales would be getting this like rose gold energy within me this kind of love, this kind of compassion, this kind of like um, beautiful feeling that you get when you're f filled with love and like joy and stuff. Then I imagine every single exhale, like I'm literally opening my arms and I'm embracing everyone around me. And I'm giving this like stream of constant, like rose gold energy to everyone around me. And I literally see people like their joyful faces, like they're hugging each other. They're literally congratulating each other. They're like enjoying their lives. And just feeling like you can be able to change other people's lives, that you can make other people happy, just brings a smile to my face as well. It's one of those things in meditation that you need to remind yourself every single day that I'm doing meditation because I want to give back. I'm doing meditation because I want the whole world to feel happy. I want myself to feel happy. The point of meditation is kindness, joy, not just focus, not just solitude, but to bring love and kindness. And that's the most powerful thing never talked about in meditation. It's giving back. It's gratitude. So take five minutes. Imagine that rose gold energy with every single inhale and you spreading that energy with every single exhale. It's going to change your life. Step two. What I always talk about. The most important thing ever in any single guide in your life is going to be routine because a routine is what shapes your habits. You can have so many good habits, but you could also not have a routine. That would not help. A routine basically combines all the good habits you have. You don't even need to have good habits to have a good routine and have a functioning life. A good way to start is that you can search up these kind of random ones. I'm sure you watched these before, like, oh, what's the best uh, morning routine that you can have? What's the best nighttime routine? But the main thing is to have an organized timetable, what you're gonna do every single day and repeat that for every single day of your life. So basically, I hope you can look at this. That is my routine right here. So I wake up at like 6 a.m. I do all my like deep work, meditation, gratitude, reading, um, do my sports, do my deep work, journaling, nighttime routine. Just basic like little guide about, you know, what your routine could also look like but that's just me. Um, and however, I would also like to mention that these YouTubers, the reason why they're not wrong is that there are essentials that you need to put in your routine to make you feel uh, this kind of uh, dopamine, endorphin, serotonin, whatever, these kind of biological names, I'm not gonna go into them, <laughs> but that is super crucial in the pursuit of real happiness. As I said previously, a 10 to 15 minute meditation completely changes your life. Search up YouTube, how to meditate there's going to be meditation guides and stretching yoga is probably one of the greatest things that no one talks about because people think that yoga is going to be like meditation you're just moving your body while like breathing right but the thing is 
when you're moving your body, when you're stretching it out, when you're genuinely doing like this and you do uh, stuff like that, it literally loosens your bones, man. Like <laughs> it literally makes you feel more relaxed. It makes your body think that you're more relaxed because you are more relaxed. Then you can go about the day in a more relaxed fashion. It's crazy how much it works. I, I stretch every single night with my friend for probably like 200 days in a row now. So it's one of the things that I've been implementing and it really helps you sleep, helps like everything, uh, helps you work, helps you focus. It's amazing. Search a yoga routine, complete full body stretching guide, whatever on YouTube, you're gonna find it. Next thing I wanna talk about, the, t the second essential is sports, right? Um, and all those other YouTubers talk about, oh, we're just gonna do 30 minutes of sports. I think that's the biggest bullshit ever. Don't like do 30 minutes of sports. Because that's not the point of doing sports. You're not doing like a certain amount of like time, you know? We're genuinely gonna like do work in the gym. If you spend like 30 minutes on one exercise, obviously you're not like actually doing good sports. Of course, it's a good thing to turn up. But what I would like to say is that just exercise until you sweat. Exercise until you get that boost in like um, whatever biological molecules such as dopamine, endorphin, whatever, you know? Because sweating is the thing that makes you happy. Sweating is the thing that makes you uh, more energized throughout the day, that makes your brain more active, that gets your blood pumping, literally. That's sweating. Because you're so hot, your blood is pumping, that's why you sweat. And the third essential, I think, this is completely just me, and you could not take this advice, but I think it's life-changing. It's just to read a page a day, man. Just a page a day is going to change your life. One of these things about reading is that once you start, it's easier to compound and read more and more and more because you're genuinely getting more into reading rather than using whatever social media you're using. And uh, reading is one of those things where, sure, it's good, and it also boosts your like life, your work, your everything. So if you can manage to read like even like a page a day, completely, complete life change. Step three. This is a very, very uh, controversial one. I would like to talk about socializing. So many people might think, oh, like monks don't socialize. They live in like complete solitude and they're just kind of like this stoic, stoic people and they just have no emotion whatsoever. Sure, to an extent that is true, but most of us don't realize that monks live in these kind of, what do you call it, like buildings? Uh, groups of like, monks live together right and they live literally in a brotherhood and the beauty of this is that they have like brothers to talk to they have people who are just like them next to them that makes them feel really like um part of a group part of a tribe and most of us never feel this kind of feeling like we're part of a group we're like accepted we're like loved you know monks feel that and i've always thought that you know the thing you should do in like these kind of monk modes that you should completely disconnect yourself and you should go and live like a caveman in the 1950s uh, just like hunting and just uh, you're focusing on my daily work. But I mean, genuinely science shows the importance of having relationships, right? Having friendships, having genuine people around you that you can talk to and feel accepted. And there's also a misconception that like, if you're a man, you should like not talk to any woman during monk mode. I think that's so stupid of a thing. Like sure, women can be like a distraction sometimes, but I think the beauty of having people of the opposite gender, and of course like genuine friends and genuine relationships, right? Is that they could literally be the booster to your rockets. Good friends act as a booster. They make you literally stronger. They make you literally want to focus more on your work. They make you more want to uh, complete all these uh, impossible tasks that you, know, you never thought were ever possible. You literally do the work for these kind of people. Sure, you can say, oh, I do these work for myself. But imagine having the motivation, imagine having these, like 10 people stand behind you instead of you just standing behind yourself. Bro, the lone wolf worked to a certain extent, but just please don't do that. It's not scientifically proven. It's not good. We're all social animals, right? And you might think, oh, I don't want to surround myself with friends, like these cheap friends, right? Found some, find some real friends. Go read How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's going to change your life. Um, but also, I also want to say that you don't have to take like a lot of time to go to parties and socialize. That's the most stupid thing. 
the most basic thing you can do is literally just like take an hour a day or something take 15 minutes out of the day have a genuine conversation with one of your friends go to have dinner with them you know have afternoon tea find some intimate moment that you guys can just talk it's a beautiful thing it's really beautiful and the last step i'm going to talk about is meaningful work many of you guys might just skip here oh i just want to do meaningful work go back bro watch every single step because you don't just get to meaningful work you need to build a routine first you need to have socializing first to people to boost you first you know um but meaningful work is definitely one of the most wonderful things that you can ever experience just doing something you love and like actually getting results from it and the way most importantly to do this is by achieving deep work uh, I would re- recommend a book right now if you never read it. Deep Work by Carl Newport. It's a brilliant book about how to genuinely get in a state of flow. And uh, yeah, you can check it out. Deep Work by Carl Newport. Anyways, the sense of flow is literally unparalleled when you do deep work. And the concentration that you put into this kind of like dedication yields the best results ever. So... You're looking at this, oh, I might not be able to do my hobby for life. Sure. You might be working, you might be studying, or you might be in pursuit of a hobby. Sure. But the way to do deep work is